So I figured that since Stone Starve the Gather side of this crossover event has already come and gone, why shouldn't we sacrifice some love for all things bah? Cult of the Lamb has become one of our favorite games to play on Twitch, and has easily taken the cake in this update overall, so I feel like this is the best I can do for my loyal slate, I mean followers, so let's discuss. No, seriously, let's discuss and give all the love to the developers here for not only making tie-ins to the Don't Starve franchise, but for making them very appropriate at that. Snatch a spider up come nightfall, and you'll have a chance to encounter a spider skull there. Bury it like we had to do way back in the day of Reign of Giants, and Weber will be born again. Not only that though, once arisen, the god of arachnids will grace us with seven, count them seven, don't starve themed decorations. Decorations ranging from boss statues with familiar faces, walls, pig heads, crafting stations, and more as you can see. And heck, for some reason, they even got a moon key banner in there for Pete's sake. But this new Weber is where your eye should take you as they are the most unique follower yet. No other Weber will ever have spiders following them wherever they go, and they even come with the special Don't Starve perk, meaning they will never die of hunger, something that any of the other Webers you happen to indoctrinate will never be able to say or do. And yes, once you do unlock Weber in a playthrough, any followers can be turned into additional Webers for your liking. Have fun. As now the true challenge of this crossover begins, Penitence Mode is here everyone. Now I unlocked this immediately upon entering a pre-existing cult, so I don't actually know if there are any other further requirements needed, but once you do, you have the option to select it, and you'll also notice a quick start selection at the start of any world as well. Both skip the tutorial, but also everything that comes with it mind, and will offer us all sorts of new mechanics that Ratal will introduce to us. From day one, we will have to constantly balance our hunger and sleep meters that will be constantly ticking down at fairly quick rates and the game will go the extra mile to really warn us of what's to come for sure. Build a cooking station and you will be demanded to chow down as soon as possible. Construct a bed and you will be asked to catch some shut eye sooner rather than later. And once you do begin to starve, warnings will pop up to indicate such and you can bet your bottom that the same is going to be for sleepiness here. But as an added bonus to the latter, the lamb will actually be slowed down, and this can truly impact any crusade you happen to be on for sure. But what happens when the meters reach zero, you ask? Well, the game gives us one last chance to save ourselves by giving us three last chances to end our starvation and or exhaustion, as you can see. But if any of these hit three ticks, you're dead, and it's game over. And oh yes, the game deletes your save file as well, so that's nice. So how do we not die horribly then? It's simple. You suffer through the same meals as you give your followers. This is early on in the game, so I can't show you the feast, unfortunately, but it does appear as if all foods have a hunger value now for both the cult overall and the lamb. However, I also noticed that the less hungry we are, the less hunger said food will restore, so be aware of that. But if it's tiredness that's getting you down, then be sure to just claim a bed as your own and hit the sack before it's too late. Doing so also skips the day though, just like how sleeping in solo don't starve does the exact same, and this is actually pretty interesting, as we don't even have to be that tired to do it either. So if we're skipping days to farm some temple sermons everyone, this could get pretty unique. You do you though. But some final notes here, penitence mode immediately grants us the omnipresence ability to escape any crusades by just holding a button as yes, hunger and exhaustion continue on Ron's mind. The developers snuck in another fresh follow reform into this update, and unfortunately I'm not really sure if I get the reference, but it is obtainable only via question mark during Cult of the Lamb's endgame portions, and last, but certainly not least, the new music. So give it a listen.
there you have number one. The Cult of the Lamb side of the Cult of the Lamb slash Don't Starve Together crossover events. Also small, but it was done right. And that is the point many of us are making and feeling following this update. It's not bad, it's just not quite right. Heck, I think we can go as far to say that it just wasn't enough on the Don't Starve Together side. DST needed one or two more things to call back to Cult itself here, just like how Cult hearkened to old school Weber mechanics. Does that make sense? Good. But wherever the case, thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all, praise Ba, and I'll sacrifice you in the next one. Bye bye.